Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Well... <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Good day, good evening, good morning, good night, and uh, just g- good tidings to everyone. Hail and welcome back to another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast episode. And uh, got a fun one for you today. This actually is a sort of like a viewer request. Haven't had one of those in a while. So I hope you guys are... Um, Ready for that? <laughs> it's uh, we're going to be talking about tier a little bit. Um, <clears throat> I've done you know some videos, or I did I did a deity discussion video some years ago about tier, and uh, it's been a while since I've had any focus or, or 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 put any real you know strict focus on any one or more of the of the various gods and goddesses of our pantheon. Um, but yeah, today's, uh, today's episode. So I got this message on, on the, uh, Midgard Musings Facebook page, which is a great way to, you know, <clears throat> get in touch with me if you have a question or a suggestion about it. Um, I like to push the, you know, the, the hotline because it's, um, a, uh, it's a, it's a, what do you call it? this? Is a, it's a listening platform. So, you know, if you would like to have your voice heard, um, then, you know, that's what this is for. Um, so, but I know a lot of people don't like, you know, hearing their own voice or, or calling or whatever, which is fine. So if you always, you know, if, if you, you always have that option, you can always DM me on, on Twitter or Facebook. I won't see the message if you DM me on Instagram. So if you want to have, you know, your voice heard without having your voice heard, if you want to have your thoughts heard, feel free to shoot me a message on either one of those platforms or send me an email midgardmusingstn at gmail.com and uh, I'll be sure to get back to you. But um, yeah, so, you know, I mean, anytime people feel like sending in a message or dropping me a message or an email or sending a voicemail, whatever, you know, it's your chance to uh, potentially be on a podcast and so much like what happened today that's that's what we're basing today's you know podcast about so um thank you to all of my you know subscribers listeners followers channel members patrons um supporters everywhere uh thank you for helping keep this podcast going thank you for your ongoing support uh thank you for you know whether you realize it or not uh, being the inspiration behind all of this, you know, um, and, and being a a motivator behind all of this. It's, it, it, it's good to know that, um, you know, you have people, um, at your back that, that want to support what you do. So, um, the, the, the message that I got today, um, it was kind of neat. I'm going to, I'm going to show you all 
uh, just what he said. This this uh, gentleman's name he's going to go by. We're just going to call him Sky. Um, and uh, he sent this message that says um, he works in, you know, because he said, hey, do you have time to chat? And I said, well, I'm kind of, you know, busy, but I'll respond when I can. He says, I completely understand. I work in the medical field and uh, time is always short. I came across your YouTube channel when I was researching for ways to honor Tyr. I would say I'm new to heathen, uh, to being a heathen, and the ideas and uh, symbols that have always uh, appeared around me. They aren't, there aren't many heathen practices around me. The ones I know either use it as a power trip or throw in some sort of white supremacy. So needless to say, I'm on my own. You know, and that's always, um, you know, tough to hear when, when, when people um, find themselves in, you know, an area, geographical area, um, where they feel like they're on their own or that they don't have anybody around to support. And so they look to the online community. And even with that, you know, um, as volatile as local in-person groups can be based off of the, the things like Sky had just mentioned, um, the, the online community communities uh, can be even more so because you can hide behind a facade. You can hide behind, you know, a fake, you know, persona um, and a fake image and a fake and, and, and just untruth, you know, so you always run that risk as well. So, you know, the fact that uh, Sky, that you found my channel and in your research, I'm glad and, and be careful, you know, out there. Um, some other channels that I would recommend are going to be posted down in this, uh, the description and the show notes, you know, so for anyone else who's coming across my podcast or my videos and they're kind of new um, to heathenry, I'm going to share some other content creators um, that I think are definitely, you know, worth your time um, in your research and, and uh, you know, channels that are wholesome, um, that share their own views on things without taking a um, a bigoted or hated or hate-filled approach, right? So, you know, with what Sky um, was talking about, you know, looking for ways to honor Tyr, um, some of what I had sent back to him, you know, he was asking also about some suggested reading because his origins, uh, his religious origins um, started in uh, Christianity, like kind of like a lot of us have, you know, we, we moved away from uh, monotheism into polytheism and we found our home as it were our comfort within um, Germanic heathenry um, northern European heathenry just paganism as a, as a, as a generalized term and um, so he was asking also you know for like suggested reading and, and all that and I gave him a very comprehensive list of things and, and I said you know look by no means am I saying that you know read these books like you would read the Bible, like religiously and all that kind of stuff, right? Every day, you know, make sure that you can remember every single, you know, uh, verse of the Havamal or, or anything like that. And I told him, I said, you know, if you don't read any of these, or if you only read some of them, or you can't find them, it's not like this is uh, me saying, or anyone saying that, you know, you're not a true heathen if you don't read any of these things, nothing like that. But a lot of the reading material that um, I shared with him included really good source material, um, <clears throat> primary and secondary sources, right? You know, so there were some things like, you know, Tacitus, Germania, um, uh, Culture of the Teutons, um, and a lot of, you know, more modern but scholarly work that uh, helps, helps you really understand what things were probably like or could have been like um, in ancient times, you know, the, the, the pre-Christian times of Northern Europe and even Scandinavia and some of the other surrounding mainland Germanic um, lands and countries and whatnot back then. So, you know, the hope is to provide you with good source material to develop your own way of thinking about it and determine if this is, you know, 
how do you want to take this approach? You know, because when, when, whenever I get people that um, either write in or call in or ask me in person or whatever about, you know, what can I do to honor this God or that God? Um, or what can I do to, you know, gift to this God? How should I gift to them? You know, and all this kind of stuff. Um, I always am careful to make sure that they know, like, even though, right, there is homework to be done and there is knowledge to be gained and there is, with as with any religion, really, you know, studying to be done. Um, there's really no one in, posi in, in a position like there is in, in, in many monotheistic be religious beliefs like Christianity and, and Judaism and, and even Islam, where there's, there's no like central authority or whatever that says, you know, you have to do this or you suffer the consequences, you know, the, uh, the, the, the consequence that we pay for, for our misdeeds or whatever is, is, is experienced in quite often in real time, because you make a bad decision and you reap bad rewards, you know, or you make a good decision and you reap a uh, good reward. And um, there's also this um, extension of, of the, the, that reward or the, or the consequence of our actions that extend past our mortal life and 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 i think you know touch upon you know <clears throat> luck and or log and, and and adding to the well you know adding to those um primal layers for our ancestors to draw from just as we are drawing from the layer um uh, in the well that that our ancestors laid down before them and, and before us that we then become the ancestors and what we do now um affects the later the later ons, you know what I mean? Like what we do in the Fardandi shapes the school. So there's all of that too. It, it, it's, 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 it's kind of part of this worldview that a lot of pagans and, and heathens specifically um, approach and, and, and adopt in their way of thinking. So when, when, when I get to, you know, the point of when someone says, you know, what can I do to honor this God or that God, or what can I do, or how should I do this? Or, you know, all that. Um, uh, I think it comes to a point of you've got to figure a lot of that out for yourself and what fits and what works for you. But there's things that there's, I think there's some fundamentals and some basics that you should know, because you can write a ritual, you can do the thing, you can, you know, sanctify your sacred space by whatever means, whether it be through, you know, fire uh, or through smoke or through whatever other means that you externally set sacred space and then you, you know, go through the motions to perform your ritual, like you can, anybody can get to that point. But, but what you should really uh, get to is, is why are you doing it? Because again, there's nobody that's standing above you or around you or whatever going, nope, you did it wrong. That's not going to work. You you violated this commandment. You didn't do it that way, and so therefore you've got to do, you know, this thing, that, or the other to correct the wrong way that you did this prayer or you you did this ritual, and so on and so forth. There's really there's nothing like that, in uh, you know, in at least in this branch of of uh, uh, of, of polytheism. So why are you looking to? focus on one or more specific gods like why do you want to know more about venerating tear specifically today's podcast is going to be about tear um you know like what is the purpose why there's and and you'll hear this a lot um when you get into conversations with other pagans you know this whole overarching uh concept of intent and i've even done a podcast about intent versus purpose you know, what we intend to do, what our intent is, um, is not the same as the purpose behind it. Um, I'll link that in the show notes and in the uh, annotated cards for those that are watching on YouTube. Go to the annotated cards and, and, and check that or check it out down in the description show notes slash show notes, wherever it's at. <laughs> um, for those that are listening, it's a, it's a podcast that I did on intent versus purpose with uh, J.M. Olufsen, another fellow heathen, a great guy wonderful craftsmanship dear friend and 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 brother of mine um 
for those that are new to the channel and new to my podcast, I don't, I don't uh, bestow titles of kinship on just anybody and everybody because you're pagan. Uh, there, there's a special place in my heart for people um, that uh, earn kinship titles, and it is definitely something you earn. But so anyway, going back to it all, right? Why do we do what we do? What is the purpose behind what we do? And in most cases, um, why do we even spend time thinking about venerating the gods, right? Um, and in most cases, I think for a lot of us, especially when we're new to heathenry or paganism, and, and, and very especially if you're coming into this from like say Christianity or any other monotheistic ridden with dogma uh, religion, you're coming into heathenry with that worldview. You are thinking I need to respect and honor and, and pray to and worship and, 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 and all this, the gods, because that's replacing the sacred deity that I'm leaving. So there's a gap that you're trying to fill. There's a hole that you're trying to, to fill, a void that you're trying to fill. And the gods, because of them being gods, because of them being sacred beings, um, are the thing that you think of, of, of at first, you know? And, and that's what you want to focus your attention on because that's what you think a good pagan does, right? Just like you think a good Christian goes to church and prays and, you know, tithes their money and, and, and whatnot, whatever other rules that the Bible tells you sh you should do to be a good Christian and all this, you come into heathenry, come into paganism with a very similar mindset, even though it's like, well, it's polytheism and I'm not, you know, just praying to one God, I'm praying to multiple gods, or I'm not just worshiping one, I'm worshiping many. So there's this baggage that a lot of us carry from our old, you know, religious beliefs and in coming into an even older religious belief into paganism so there's that and and so but why why do we do that there's there's that there's the reason to fill the fill that hole or fill that void um with something that we used to do and that we became very familiar with but it's important to understand the uh again the purpose of why our ancient ancestors believed the way they believed and lived the way they did it was a it was a very much different worldview their approach to the gods was and you know i'm not going to say that this is exactly the way it was because we're, we're we're learning new things all the time you know where we're figuring things out where a lot of times we're we're speculating even even the the most uh, elite scholars um and uh you know people of of renown who have spent their whole lives studying this um, sort of thing and, and trying to figure out these things are still learning new things and coming up with new ways. But for the most part, we understand that, you know, that the, the relationship that um, in the ancient heathens or arch heathens, if you will, the, the indigenous people of these lands, the way that they uh, had a relationship with the sacred was not the same as you would think of now in modern days as the way we approach, let's say, God, right? going to church, uh, saying prayers. Yes, there's some similarities in that we, we approach the sacred, we approach our gods with a, um, a, a due level of venerance and respect. You know, It's why so many of us uh, will dedicate a space, an altar, uh, if it's outdoors, maybe like a hogar or a ve, some sort of grow, some sort of set aside place of sanctity. Um, a, a sacred place for us to approach the gods. It, it, it's, it, it allows us to separate, you know, instead of walking into a church and knowing that now oh, I'm in God's house, right? Now you're walking into the, the corner of your office or the, or the you know, mantelpiece of your, uh, your fireplace or a closet, maybe uh, if you're like in an apartment and you have limited space, whatever, you know, or, or it's, a, it's, it's a literal grove, a, a circle of trees, a circle of stones, whatever. It's, it's that separation, um, that, that physical representation of I'm leaving the outside world and I'm coming into or approaching the gods. I'm approaching divine beings. I'm approaching the sacred. So 
way the way that our ancient an ancestors and way these ancient peoples did it was was for very specific reasons and at very specific times at least so much as we know of that's documented right we know for a fact that there was very specific uh bloats that were held in 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 northern europe the scandinavian countries and and even in mainland germania uh the like the saxons and, and the frisians and and some of these other mainland germanic uh people that that can that came from other tribes over time you know they had dedicated uh holy days or holy tides every year and it was documented that they would sacrifice to the gods very and in very specific manners they would they would hold bloat they would sacrifice blood it, it was part of that sacred ritual to the gods for specific things you know you had Sigur bloat um that is in the the northern beginning of summer that was a a victory bloat to odin to uh gift to him and to the gods for victory in in the upcoming you know times where where war was waged where battle was when you would go on raids and, and all this kind of stuff and there was victory bloat which is what Sigur bloat is you had uh the the winter nights um bloat the, you know around the the, the decent bloat the, the mother nights uh traditionally i believe it was a, a saxon a very saxon uh leaning um bloat i'm not big on the uh history with with uh saxon heathenry so don't necessarily quote me on that but there's some really tremendously good sources on on that too out there which i'll try to share in the the annotated cards but also do.com robert sauce I've I've had him on my podcast before, and he's he's done a lot of really neat work and learned a lot. Uh, his 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 work has been featured uh, um, on on his blog article now for some years, and he's been doing this for for quite some time. Yeah, I know some of you listening or what we're watching, whatever, are going to be like, oh, you know, you got something to say about him. I don't personally have a bad thing to say about the guy, and I'm not going to do that here. But anyway, getting off topic, you know, um, Winter Nights was uh the, the 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 time of year to give to the gods and uh in 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 bloat and in sacrifice to the gods for um you know a uh for 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 a good um in, in preparation for the cold right in preparation for the winter to, to to sacrifice and thanks for the good year's harvest because again if you didn't have a good harvest you didn't have enough food to last you through the winter so you could potentially starve you know um and then you had yule and yule was the midwinter uh festival that or the midwinter bloat that you would uh that they would have to uh you know sacrifice to the gods and thanks for making it through the harshest times of the year and and to um in anticipation and hopes of having a a profitable and a, and a bountiful um season of, of farming and, and all this kind of stuff and then to get ready for all of that again so you got to think like the purpose the why um why were things done was it because they felt like well it's that day of the week again and i gotta you know quote unquote go to church i gotta you know pay my tithes i gotta i woke up and now i gotta pray to to the gods to protect me or was it it was it was a way for them to connect with things that were definitely they felt were bigger than them whether it was the elements and, and uh the, the forces of nature around them which they um kind of turned into you know or how they 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 shaped the, the the forces the storms the 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 winters the all this kind of stuff the forces of nature how they, how they became sacred and they became the gods eventually you know how 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 their connection with the world around them turned into their religion you know um it was more of that than it was out of just necessity out of just thinking well i i've got to go pray to Tyr now i've got to go pray to odin now because it's that time of day or you know it's that time of night or whatever so i'm going around around the ways a bit but the bottom line is you know when i think of uh why or or, or what should i do to sacrifice to the gods how should i sacrifice to tear how should i gift the tear what can i do to honor tear to worship tear what what should i do well figure out why you want to do it to begin with 
you know, have you uh, uh, experienced things in your life, your own personal experiences, your unverified personal gnosis, UPG. It's like, I, I, and I told this to Sky, I said, you know, there, you, so much of, of learning about heathenry is, is the academia, you know, studying, learning about source materials and, and, and how this, this, this religion could have possibly been observed and practiced in ancient times. But don't neglect um, and don't shun away from your personal experiences because you're going to have them. And so much of your religion is going to be based off of your personal experiences, right? This gets into some other stuff that is, is, is my own UPG. Um, as long as you're recognizing it for what it is and not trying to pass it off as fact, you know, not trying to pass it off as, well, this is the way the ancient heathens did it and, 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 and this is the way I'm going to do it. If you don't have any source material to back that up, then just say so. Right. Hey, guys, this is my UPG, but this is what I do. And who knows if that if that won't help, you know, growth and development of other people. So what I've done, you know, in, in, in the ways that I've, I've, I've approached my heathenry is um, not to be, you know, not to gatekeep too much. You know, I do what I do and I, and I keep certain things private uh, and I keep certain things pertaining to my tribe, um, tribal and, and closed off in that way. But we're also not, um, you know, closed off. We're not, a, this is not a closed off religion. This is not something that we are not welcoming other people to come in and learn our way of doing things and be a part of our way of doing things because, uh, you know, everybody's looking for something to be a part of. Everybody's looking for those groups that they want to click up with and, and feel like they're part of a family in a way. So, you know, the neat thing with Sky was, him feeling as that he was isolated and alone. And he gave me his, you know, city and state of location. And I was like, huh, you know what? You're probably not as alone as you think you are. And I actually know a community not too far from you of, of really decent and good people that I'm going to give you some information on. And as it turns out, one of the people that admins that Facebook group has, uh, so it was a long time old friend of, of Sky. You know, uh, they hadn't talked in very long or something like that. And they, uh, they, they got reconnected through that interaction, through mine and his interaction. He's like, thank you so much for, for, for this. And, and, you know, so there you go. Like you've got this whole social media thing, you know, the online communities and how, like I mentioned earlier on in the podcast and how volatile it can be. Um, it, it can also be very wholesome and it is in, 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 in many, many ways, uh, in, in ways like this, you know. So I told Sky, or I asked him, I said, you know, if you don't mind, because he was asking that question, you know, what can I do to honor Tyr? What can I do to worship Tyr? So, well, if you don't mind, I'd like to make this the, the topic of this week's podcast, because I think it's a great thing to talk about, not just because of Tyr, you know, and I did say that this podcast was going to be about Tyr, but it's really more, I think, <clears throat> about our individual uh, feelings, our individual approaches to dealing with the gods, interacting with the gods. You know, when I, when I came into heathenry very early on, I was, I was super hardcore driven into, you know, I've got to have my altar set up. I've got to have a representation of the gods on my altar. I've got to have an idol. I've got to have a, or, you know, a God pole or whatever you want to call it. I've got to have my, you know, I've got to have this, I got to have that. Um, and I've got to learn how to bloat, you know, got to know the, the, the right way of doing it. Um, but I was, you know, I was nothing wrong with that, you know, nothing wrong with, you know, and there's, there's a lot of people out online that'll, you know, uh, write their own little devotionals, prayers, whatever you want to call them to different gods. And they're, and they're beautiful. Actually, I love looking online and seeing what people are writing, whether it's on a blog article or on a social media post. Like I love seeing, the creativity, excuse me. <clears throat> I love seeing the creativity that gets displayed um, and shared with people when they're wanting to honor the gods in that way. Um, and I, I would be lying if I said that some of what I've read 
was not uh, inspiration for me to do my own work in that way, you know. Um, so yeah, I've 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 used the internet. I've I've looked at up things, and are they ancient in in their character? Are they are they very old writings? Absolutely not. You know, uh, could they be inspired from older bades or older prayers or older wordings of things? Possibly, but more than likely, it's just one person's, you know, feeling inspired to 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 verbalize and write or write whatever in a about a certain thing in a certain way. But it is it's it's very it's very inspiring to me to see that because that shows a lot of us in the moment, right? That you're willing to to kind of do what we do here on the, on like on the on podcasts and on other channels and and some of these other content creators these other heathen content creators that are out here you know <clears throat> doing research finding things out and then here you guys go here's where you can find it here's where you can learn for yourselves and that's been what i feel has been such a important part of of the 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 online heathen community's growth and development it's not so much like yeah anybody could sit here and be like, I mean, so I could have done, I could have taken this a different angle for Sky. I could have been like, you mean you want to, uh, you know, worship Tyr? Go and, and read articles about Tyr. Go find, you know, um, you know, go go read uh, Tacitus and, and see the, the connections between um, Tyr and the Roman god of war, Mars. And, and see why, you know, there was the similarities, uh, the similarities in cross cultures and, and all that kind of stuff, or, or figure it out for yourself, buddy, go, you know, do your own research. You know, how, who, who am I to tell you how to worship the gods? I'm nobody, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and try to, to tell you any of that. There's been people like that, and there's probably still even are people like that, plenty of people like that, that are, that are so callous or so just jerks about information, you know, go figure it out for yourself. And I'm not saying that there's not a place for that, but it's how it's all in the delivery, you know. It's kind of like me uh, today with him. I, you know, I could have sat there and, and written a big long paragraph, and that would have been the end of it. But what does that really do for him? What does that do for Sky? Right? Oh, it's it's one person's opinion. I, I was doing some research. I found you on YouTube, and I had a question for you. Okay. Well, here's some more information that you can research and find about this whole path because it's not just about tear. It's not just about Odin. It's not just about Thor. It's not just about Frigg or Freyr. You know, it's not just about Jotuns and it's not just about trolls and it's not just about the sagas and it's not just about the stories and the myths and the lore, right? That's all fascinating and it's all great and it all helps, you know, really paint the the the, the cosmology parts of things or the or the 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 mythos of things, but ultimately like this is a religion and a religion carry has worldviews, you know, coming into heathenry, coming into any religion, you know, you are, are changing from one worldview into another and, and you will absolutely not learn your, this worldview. You will not re reprogram yourself to think this way overnight or even in, in, in a few months or a few years, you know, I've been doing this now. I've been heathen now for about six or seven years. That I would that I could comfortably say I've uh, yeah, I'd say about seven, probably seven or eight years now. Wow, it doesn't even seem that long. I'm just because I'm thinking back on like when I met my wife, and you know we've been together now for oh, just you know um, six over six years, uh, or approaching six years. And uh, I was pagan, you know, even before I met her, just never really quite jumped into it as, 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 as heavily. So anyway, you know, seven, seven, eight years, whatever. And I'm still, you know, finding myself at times, you know, realizing, oh, there, there's, there's some little bit of that old uh, Christian baggage that pops up or pokes through. Um, so give it time and it's because it's going to take time but learn about the the world views learn about the 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 the, the, host, the historical information the source material that we that we have that's you know been worked on by a lot of people for for many many years to try and uh fill in gaps right now 
well, you know, one could say, well, that's, that's too much work for me. That's not what I'm, that's not what I'm in this for. That's not what I'm trying to do. Okay. That's fine. That's what you're not about. You know, I am about, uh, maybe not 100% a full hardcore reconstructionist. Um, but I am definitely about learning as much as I can about the ways that this religion may have been practiced in ancient times and, and figuring out how it fits and how it applies in modern times and uh, recreating that. Because if it worked then for our ancient ancestors, yes, I mean, the gods are old and, and the gods have been, you know, known for, for centuries, if not millennia. But we're also modern heathens and we are in modern times. And, who and, you know, who are we to say that the gods are not equally uh, as advanced and, 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 and whatever? I mean, they're sacred beings, for goodness sake. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the, the way that mankind and humanity has evolved um, over the years uh, to think that the gods have any uh, are, 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 are not even greater than that in terms of their advancements. You know how the gods um, once connected with people how do they connect with people now well we've got social media right and i'm not saying that i'm not saying that you know because of social media because of this internet because of this networking that we have the capabilities of, of tapping into that you know it replaces the grassroots level stuff the boots on the ground you know nothing like this virtual happening right now is going to replace being in nature having your feet in the ground your hands touch the earth your lungs breathe in the fresh air the, the 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 sounds of nature around you the feelings of the wind the water that you know you will never find that online you will never experience that online that is where the gods dwell now or you know that is where i feel like the gods are the gods are around us and and, and they, they they speak to us through nature and, and we connect to them in ways because of nature do they exist on another plane do they do they literally figuratively whatever exist on another plane sure because they're they're the gods you know what i mean they may not be omnipotent they may not be omnipresent but they do have a place that they exist that is beyond this profane space um but how we can connect with them in this profane space is is by being outside by being out in nature and as, as closely as we can come to to experiencing that recreating that i think we're we're closer to to experiencing the gods in that way now goes this you know to everything that i say i hear my i hear some people saying well what about this you know what about the fact that i live in the city you know or, or you know my 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 apartment complex is literally you know a, a four square mile cement block and there's there's you know no nature around me for you know 20 miles or whatever like find a way like i don't know if you want it bad enough you'll you'll make it happen you know um but <laughs> And and there's another guy on here, like Eric Shervin. He 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 does a lot of really good content about stuff like this, you know, about the facing the challenges of being. He just did a recent video uh, about being, you know, an urban heathen. I think they call it, you know, being so so stuck into the the inner cities, you know, or or being in such a uh, an urbanized area where your connection to nature is is displaced a bit. Um, and what ways you can, what things you can do to reconnect. So for, for folks like that, that are listening right now and watching and going, but dude, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the city, you know, and I, and I, you know, I can't, yeah, sure. There's a park nearby, but you know, there's, there's people everywhere and there's this and there's that check out Eric's channel. He's, he's going to be one of the ones that I have talked about on this podcast many times before he's been featured on the channel. He's a great guy. I've talked to him many times. I feel like we're friends, um, you know, on a, on a, beyond just being content creators like we've talked on the phone and, and i have his number and he has mine that sort of thing and uh so check his channel out and check out some of his videos about stuff like this because this is modern heathenry man like we are living in the 21st century it's 2022 and you know you got to adapt you got to figure out ways and that's the cool thing about it like that's the heathen approach on things is is you know adapting and being innovative and and figuring things out and making things work it's not so much of being stuck in the dark ages 
you know, and being so disconnected and off the grid with the modern world. I mean, hey, if that's what you want to do, you want to go off grid and, and, you know, do that, then sure, by all means. But I don't think those people are sitting here listening to me talk about stuff like this if they're off the grid. But, um, but yeah, so the, all the things that I talk about, right, all the ways that I, this is my heathenry. This is the way that I heathen and, and the way that I've come to heathen is not the same way that I heathened three, four, five, six, seven years ago, or even last year. It may be closer now than it was, you know, a year ago or whatever. But even then, like there, there's, there's slight modifications, there's slight changes. My view of the world itself, not just a religious worldview, but my view of the literal world itself and my place in it has changed super drastically just within the last four months. Right. So there's going to be things like that that have a huge impact on what I say and why I say it. Because it's been based off of my experience, my actual experience, my living experience, the things that I touch, feel, taste, see and smell. You know, and um, so that's heathenry too to me, like that's part of heathenry. You've got to feel it yourself. You've got to experience it yourself. You've got to know what it feels like to stand with other like-minded people, whether it's in a room, around a table, in a tent, around a tree, around a fire, near the creek bed of a, of a river in a park, whatever. You've got to know what it feels like to stand amongst like-minded people, people who have the same goals in your, in your mind, and, and just talk with them. And especially when you get into religious rituals and, and things that tie you all together with the gods, you cannot replicate that online. You can't. I don't care how many Discord servers you guys get on. I don't care how many online Facebook live streams you join. I don't care what it feels like for you in that moment, as profound and as, and as wonderful as it may feel. It's nothing like being there in person. I can guarantee you that. You will not have the same experience as, you, as if it would be in person. So... <clears throat> have those experiences, right? How can I honor Tyr? How can you honor any of the gods? How do you worship any of the gods? You know, Tyr was a, a, a focal point for Sky. He focuses in on Tyr. For what reasons? Is it because of the, the, the self-sacrifice elements that we read about in the lore? Is it because of the, the, the connotations of that, that he has with justice and right action? Is it because he is Lord of all of the thing and presides over the thing and, and, and that justice is, is, is right regardless and that there's this constant balance, you know, needing to be sought with, within the, the, the construct of what justice is, you know? I mean, I myself always have, have, have a Tiwaz rune on. You know, I've, I've had this, this, this tear pendant, this, this Tiwaz rune on my neck for uh for 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 a very long time for probably about the last five or so years of me being pagan this is actually a pendant that never comes off my neck thor's hammer does and uh i, I take it off it's it's heavier first of all if i slept in it and i twisted the wrong way i'd probably asphyxiate myself um because it's a hefty piece of jewelry but so there's the whole safety element uh, or aspect of things. But this, this, this pendant has not left my neck except for the change, like the chain that it's been on um, for the biggest part of the last five years. So I get it. Like tear is a very, uh, and has been a very important part in, in my pagan practices as well, especially early on. Now, you know, a lot of folks may, may remember um, when I first started doing like YouTube live streams, I got swatted, not like a bug, like people swatting me. I, I mean, I got like, Doors busted in, guns drawn on me by the by the cops. You know, I was targeted by swatters to have local law enforcement come in and uh, disrupt what I was doing, which was nothing illegal, was nothing wrong, but it was a disruption from law enforcement. You know, 
tears wheelhouse, if you will. So I took a very strong angle and approach to working with tear and, 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 and venerating tear and, and gifting to tear, you know, so how do I do it? Like I would have gift with any of the gods, you know, I, I, I approach the gods in my way of, 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 you know, creating sacred space. And I would, you know, gift an item, usually a libation of sorts, right? Whether it was mead or whether it was ale or uh, whiskey in many cases. Um, and I would write a piece to say, I would, I would pray to the God that I was wanting to, uh, to appeal to and invoke, you know? And then I would gift that item. It would, I, would, I wouldn't consume it. I would destroy it. It would be poured into the earth or burned if it was like an item that was burnable, you know, so if it was like food and it was not, you know, harmful to the environment or anything like that, I would burn it or bury it. I've done it all. I've, I've buried it. I've burned it. I've, I've bogged things. Maybe not necessarily bog it as in like let it sink into the river, but I've, I've sent things down the river. I've sent things off with water in the river. Nothing like littering, nothing like that was not biodegradable, but I'm talking like, you know, uh, food items or, 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 or ashes of things that I've burned, you know, stuff like that. Like there's been a very a, a specific ritual approach to the way I give to the gods. If it's a gift to the gods, if it's a, if I expect, or if I hope not that it's an expectation, but if I want something out of this exchange, right? I, I hope I gift in hopes of receiving a gift back. That's what the gifting exchange is here for. That's why we do what we do it. That's why the pagans of old did it, right? They gifted to the gods, they sacrificed to the gods, because first of all, they were thankful that they didn't die in the harshest time of the year. And they were hoping that they didn't die again the next go around. So thank you, Lord Odin. Thank you, Freyr, Tyr, whatever the gods at the time that they would venerate are, they would gift to them this animal, right? Or this, uh, and, and they would, you know, yeah, they would consume it amongst the tribes, but the, the blood was the, was the sanctifying thing. The blood was what they used to, to, to bless with. And it was now gifted to the gods. It was gifted to the sacred. And there was their gift to them in hopes of receiving a gift back from the gods of you get to live another winter. You get to have a good, strong harvest. You have plenty of food to last you in the harsh and lean times, you know? So maybe we're not the same people anymore. We're not, you know, needing extra food for the summer so that we don't die in the winter, but there's going to be times I think that whether it's we as individuals or, or collectively as, as a tribe or kindred of sorts, right. That there's going to be times when we seek to appeal to the gods. And we maybe do that around specific times of the year. You know, maybe we, we mark our calendars to observe specific holy tides. But then maybe we also have separate things, individual things, where we approach the gods in our own way to, in hopes of, of, of appealing to them. And is it always going to be successful? Are the gods always going to pay attention to one person's actions? Probably not, you know? I mean historically speaking we don't know of any cases where the gods were uh appealed to at an individual level except for maybe uh the do with like great heroes and kings the gods didn't take special attention to one person's action unless they were someone of renown unless they were had a saga written about them right but hey we live in saga time so is it out of the realm of possibility probably not either you know um so again, the whole, it goes back to again, why, what's the purpose? Why do we do what we do? It, you know, how you do it is really up to you. How do you want to venerate tear? Do you want to, you know, sacrifice something that means a lot to you and, and, and ritually destroy it, whether it's burning it, burying it, bogging it, you know, making it unfit for this profane space to be ever be used again something of great value to you as, as, as he knew that he had to uh, sacrifice his hand to the wolf or for the betrayal um, that, that, that was, that was shown to him, you know, just there, there, there's no one that's going to tell you how to do it. Sure. There's some ideas and there's some things that you can read about of, of the ways that the, the pagans would, would connect with the sacred. So maybe you take, 
from that and you use those ideas as inspiration to do it your own way. You know, but a lot of people are like, well, what should I use? Should I, is, is coffee okay? Well, how much is coffee even worth? Do you think that the gods are going to pay attention to you for pouring down, you know, a $2.50 cup of joe into the ground? That's That doesn't mean a whole lot. But what would they think of you pouring down, you know, a $17 glass of whiskey or a 50 something dollar shot, right? Knowing that that is worth way more. And, and, you know, you had to work hard to get that. You had to, you know, and you are not enjoying it. You're not taking that sip of whatever it is out of enjoyment. You are buying it for the purpose of gifting to the gods because it, it, its value is so much more. You know, I used to know a guy that would, um, he didn't drink alcohol, um, but he would say, I'll, I'll, give to, I'll give him a Red Bull uh, or an energy drink or whatever. And, you know, I mean, I'm like, okay, I mean, it's what, that's like three bucks? You think the gods are going to care about that? But again, you know, Part of me was also like, well, you know, maybe that's all you can afford. Maybe that $3 is your meal for the day. And instead of buying your meal for the day, you went and you got something to give to the gods and, and you did without for yourself in hopes of getting something back from them. Now, that gesture, again, the purpose, the reason why in, in, in all of it, it's all relative. And, and that means something. So, it, it, you know. On the surface, it may seem like, well, that that ain't much because, you know, it's 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 just a three dollar can of a Red Bull or it's just a two dollar cup of coffee or it's just this or it's just that. You know, maybe it is. Maybe it's more than that. Maybe you, you know, again, maybe for that guy, you know, he's like, well, that three dollars that I spent on that can of Red Bull is, is all I had to eat on that day. And now I'm not going to eat. But the gods got something. I don't know. Right. We don't know. So maybe some things to think about. Um, I went around a lot on this episode. You know, I said at the beginning, it's going to be one about tear, but it's really more than that, guys. It's, it's, it's more than just focusing on what to do for one God. Could I sit here? Could I do a podcast? Could I read to you about, well, this is how you bloat. This is how you do it. This is step A through Z. Yeah, sure. You can also find that out um for yourself and, and learn that yourself through some through some study it's out there um and you also come up with it yourself you learn it yourself you do it yourself you find a way you make the thing happen you know if you're doing it just because an article tells you how to do it what difference is that than just you know being like every other hypocrite christian out here that just you know, screws around all week long and and then gets up on Sunday morning, goes to church, prays about it, and thinks that they're all good. So find the purpose, find the reason why. And then the how-tos are begun are going to become more sincere. The hows, you know, what you do, the the the, the mechanics of it all are, are gonna fall in place. It's gonna be sincere, it's gonna be true, it's gonna be honest. And that's what makes it more powerful than anything. It's not about reading an instruction manual and following it step by step. I mean, it's okay to stumble over your words during ritual. It's okay to trip on your way around the fire. <laughs> you know, it's okay to, you know, it's okay if the wind comes and knocks over your, your, your staff that you have propped up as, as, as a centerpiece. You know, it's okay when things don't go 100% as planned because that's life. Nothing goes as planned. So, you know, be a part of that. Be a part of that little hiccup, you know, the, 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 that mini moment of, of chaos, as it were, you know. Be a part of it. Learn from it what you can. And just keep doing what you're doing. And learn along the way. Don't be afraid to, to learn and, and, and pick up new things. And find new things. Never stop learning. Never stop searching. So anyway, um, Sky, thank you for, for, for writing in. And, and thank you for sharing your thoughts. And I hope that, um, first of all, this has been helpful, uh, a helpful approach. Uh, and gave you some great things to think about. 
And I also hope that the, the, the connection that you were able to reestablish with an old friend in, uh, in, the, in the Birmingham slash Northern Alabama area of the United States proves to be fruitful and good for not just you, but for them and for anyone else that you uh, come in contact with and share and tie weird with you and your um, fiance, I believe. Um, so hail and good health to you specifically, Sky. And hail and good health to everyone. Uh, thank you for tuning in and listening and watching today's podcast. If you did like it, be sure to engage with this uh, podcast on whatever platform it is, whether it's a follow, whether it's a like, whether it's an upvote, whether it's a share. Sharing truly and, and, and greatly helps. This is out on a dozen different platforms now at this rate. So wherever you catch your podcasts on, be sure to share the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast around. So um, definitely appreciate all of your guys and gals' constant support. Um, don't forget to check the show notes and description area for the Midgard Musings link tree link that directs and points you in all kinds of directions of ways that you can support what I do here. There's merchandise on the spring store. There's be, being coming a uh, patron on Patreon. All of that stuff is linked up there or down here or over there or wherever it is. So as always, be sure to check all that stuff out when and as you're able to. Thank you once again for all of your ongoing and constant support. And until we all talk again, hail, may the gods continue to walk with you and may your ancestors always smile upon you.